Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that wasn't, that wasn't enthusiastic enough. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, much better. Welcome to worship today on this Sunday, August 15th. It's great to have you joining us here in person, and for those of you joining us online, we're glad you're joining us wherever you may be. Welcome to worship on this Sunday. My name is Pastor Emily Kinsel, and I am glad you're here. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. God is calling you today. God needs your gifts and graces to help others. Come, let us worship and celebrate God's love for us. Amen. I'd like you to continue to be in prayer with me as we pray our opening prayer together. Sojourning God. Your spirit exists everywhere, on every path, inviting us to move with curiosity and compassion toward each other. Open us to the depth of our connections, even when it seems our differences are so profound. Show us our shared humanity so that we may know what others love see what we love that we love the same and carry the burdens and the love together nudge us and guide us we pray amen our opening hymn today comes from the faith we sing number 2130 the summons as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me. Lord, your summons echoes true in you, but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. We come now to our children's time. And as I shared last week, we're going on a journey. So I have my backpack. It's a different backpack because the other one got used for school. But this one might be more fun anyways. It's got cats all over it. So we've got our backpack with us today. And as we talked about, there's things that we carry when we leave and things that we gather as we're along the journey. And today, we have some special things in our backpack, so I'm going to pull them out. One of them, one thing we have is so big, it wouldn't even fit in the backpack, but I'll pull the ones out of the backpack first. So in the backpack, we have this candle. It kind of lights up. It's not super easy to see right now. A different candle. This one is really old. This one's 15 years old, I'm pretty sure. And we have a little candle. Then we've got a desk lamp. Now this is different than some people. We have all different kinds of desk lamps in our life. This is one that we have. Actually, I'll turn the one up here too. Look, here's another light. And a remote uh, pumping flashlight, which is always exciting. And I might need assistance. We'll see if I can open this and not break it. wouldn't 
put in the backpack because I think I might hurt myself if I tried to put it in the backpack. And then we have a big camping lantern. So all of these are different kinds of lights. And we have all different kinds of lights in our house. We have different kinds of lights in here. Some have fans, some are in the ceiling, some are loose, some are over pianos or over pulpits, but there's lights everywhere. And all over the world, we see lights, all different kinds of lights. Because everywhere that we go, there's a need for light to shine in the darkness. The city of God, the world, the kingdom of God is a place where God shines that light into the darkness. And God calls for each of us to shine that light into the darkness. So we all look different, just like these lights all look different and have different purposes, but we all shine a light, just like each of these types of light and lanterns shine a light into the world. So we are called by God to be a light, to shine a light with all whom we encounter, which is our focus for today, encounter. So I'm going to ask you to pray with me. We are going to pray similar like we did last week. I'll put my stuff back in the backpack in a minute. But we will pray, and I invite you to pray and repeat after me. We've got our packs. We've got our load. We're ready now to hit the road. Be with us, God, around the bend. Help us to make strangers friends. Amen. Our scriptures this morning come first from Psalms, and the second one comes from John 4, and it's a long one, but it's, it's important we get the whole story in. And Gail is our liturgist this morning. Psalm 146 from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have being. Put not your trust in princes and a son of man in whom there is no help. When his breath departs, he returns to his earth. On that very day, he plans, his plans perish. Happy is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets his prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, my God, thy God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. And the gospel reading is from John 4, verses 7 through 30. And this is from the, mes the message. A woman, a Samaritan, came to draw water. Jesus said, would you give me a drink of water? His disciples had gone to the village to buy food for lunch. The Samaritan woman, taken aback, asked, how come you, a Jew, are asking me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? Jews in those days wouldn't be caught dead talking to Samaritans. Jesus answered, if you, if you knew the generosity of God and who I am, you would be asking me for a drink, and I would give you fresh living water. The woman said, sir, you don't even have a bucket to draw with, 
and this well is deep. So how are you going to get this living water? Are you a better man than our ancestor Jacob, who dug this well and drank from it, he and his sons and livestock, and passed it down to us? Jesus said, everyone who drinks this water will get thirsty again and again. Anyone who drinks the water I give will never thirst, not ever. The water I give will be an, will be an artesian spring within, gushing fountains of endless life. The woman said, sir, give me, give me this water so I won't ever get thirsty, won't ever have to come back to this well again. He said, go call your husband and then come back. I have no husband, she said. You've had five husbands, and the man you're living with now isn't even your husband. You spoke the truth there, sure enough. Oh, so you're a prophet. Well, tell me this. Our ancestors worship God at this mountain, but you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place for worship, right? Believe me, woman, the time is coming when you Samaritans will worship the Father neither here at this mountain nor there in Jerusalem. You worship guessing in the dark. We Jews worship in the clear light of day. God's way of salvation is made available through the Jews. But the time is coming, in fact, it has come when what you called will not matter and where you go to worship will not matter. God is sheer being itself, spirit. Those who worship him must do it out of their very being, their spirits, their true selves in adoration. The woman said, I don't know about that. I do know that the Messiah is coming and when he arrives, we'll get the whole story. I am he, said Jesus. You don't have to wait any longer or look any further. And just then his disciples came back and they were shocked. They couldn't believe he was talking with that kind of a woman. No one said what they were all thinking, but their faces showed it. The woman took the hint and left. In her confusion, she left her water pot. Back in the village, she told the people, come see a man who knew all the things who knew all about the things I did, who knows me inside and out. Do you think this could be the Messiah? And they went out to see for themselves. Thus ends the reading. Told you it was a little bit of a long story, but you gotta have the whole story. <laughs> Part of it would be missing if we didn't hear the whole thing. So blessings today, blessings today on this Sunday. We welcome you today. I'm so grateful for this chance to look at this story and be reminded of the encounter that Jesus had with this woman. The encounter he had with someone that would have been frowned upon at the time. Someone who was not like him, but Jesus didn't care. He saw everybody as important. He saw everybody as valued, as worthy, and faced everybody with that same feeling. So this morning, we're gonna look at this encounter and think about other encounters in our lives where God shows up through us or to us, depending on the situation. And remembering that strangers are just friends that we haven't quite met yet. So I invite you to pray with me this morning. God of our hearts and God of our lives, here we are. We gather near and far with thirsty hearts, praying your word will satisfy us. We gather near and far with aching hearts, praying for good news to comfort us. We gather near and far with over overflowing hearts, praying for a chance to share your love. We gather near and far connected by the many ways in which we encounter you every day. 
Be with us today, in this time, and in this place, we pray. Amen. Praise, praise, praise. Psalm 146 is a psalm that is filled with praise for God. It opens and closes with those words to praise the Lord. Psalm 146 reminds us that even in the midst of challenges, we are called to praise. Even in the midst of brokenness, we are called to praise. Even in the midst of death and sadness, we are called to praise because God is always present and always active and always worthy of our praise. God's commitment for all of creation yesterday, today, and tomorrow is to be there for all of humanity. The theme for one, Psalm 146 is the call to lifelong praise, centering around God's, the witness of God in our world. The opening verses offer a personal response to the general call to praise the Lord. It offers a pledge to praise the Lord, to praise the Lord as long as we live for all of our life long. I love this image of pledging ourselves to God, pledging our very beings and committing them ourselves to God. In our lives, there are many times and many ways and many organizations where we pledge our time and our energy. Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, Alliance Club, fraternities, sororities, sporting teams, our community, our country, our church, just to name a few. When we make a promise to praise God for as long as we are living, we're pledging that in all that we say and all that we do and all that we are, we will praise our Lord. This is a pretty tall order, and we often fall short, but God's grace is big enough for those times when we make mistakes. And God is still worthy of our praise. In this psalm, there's a list of descriptors of who God is, highlighting creator, restorer, caregiver, to name a few of those. God is often seen and understood first and foremost as your creator. God created the heavens and the earth and all of the living things on it. And God cares deeply for all of creation and seeks for justice to prevail amongst all of creation and extends extra care and concern to the vulnerable in our communities, the oppressed, the hungry, the prisoner, the lost, the blind, the hurt, the stranger, the orphan, the widow. Psalm 146 portrays an amazing vision of healing, of restoration, of wholeness. I don't have to tell you that we live in a broken world, a world where disappointment, anger, and injustice are all too common. But through the words of the psalm, we are assured that the kingdom of God is different. And our hope and our prayer is that we get to encounter even just a little bit of that here on earth. As a mother, as a Christian, and simply just as a human being walking on this earth, my heart aches for this broken and hurting world. There are far too many people of all ages being treated as less than human. There are far too many people experiencing harm because of who they were created to be. And there are far too many people who feel alone and hopeless because of their situation or circumstances. In the kingdom of God, I believe there is room enough for all people. In the kingdom of God, I believe there is place for all to be loved and nurtured and cared for. In the kingdom of God, may we be led first and foremost by love. God is a God of love. And Jesus spent his life and his ministry teaching us to care for and love one another, no matter what. 
Throughout Jesus' time on earth, he encountered a great number of people and extended care and compassion to every single person he met. This morning, we heard a story of a woman whom he met at the well, a woman who was simply drawing water for the day. At first glance, nothing seems out of the ordinary in this story, nothing important to note. She's just a woman. We don't even know her name. She's a woman who has a past, and she's come to this well to perform her daily task of gathering water for her household. This is something she probably did every day, probably at the same time, at a time when there weren't a lot of people so she wouldn't have to explain herself or deal with anyone. She was just minding her own business, doing what she needed to do so she could get back home. As a Samaritan woman, her social status was pretty low. And in fact, for Jesus, to be in Samaria at all was unusual and perhaps a little scandalous. The Samaritans were considered unclean by the Israelites. They were avoided at all costs by the Jewish people. Jesus traveling through the region on his way from Jerusalem to Galilee, rather than going around Samaria, he chose to take this most direct path. And it took him right in the heart of Samaria. It was a longer way to go around, but that's what most people did so that they could avoid Samaria. So here he is. Jesus is in the Samaritan village, resting beside this well while his disciples were off gathering food and supplies. He had no bucket, no cup, no bowl, no rope, nothing to get water. So he asked this woman for water, if she'll get him water. She was surprised by this question taken aback and a little shocked probably too. How come you, a Jew, she says, are asking me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? But in true Jesus fashion, he didn't answer her question. He threw another question right back at her. And he said, if you knew the generosity of God and who I am, you would be asking me for a drink and I would give you fresh living water. Jesus' question confused the woman. But she didn't back away. She continued to engage with him. She continued to seek more information from him. Something about this man intrigued her, compelled her to want to know more. What was amazing and likely what convinced her of who he was was that he knew her, everything about her, inside and out, knew who she was. And it excited her because she could figure out who he was. And he confirmed her thoughts that he was Jesus, the Messiah. So this Samaritan woman with her sordid past was the first person that Jesus revealed himself to. This testimony to, was a testimony to her faith and her openness, her willingness to see and understand. She knew, had heard about this Messiah coming, and she knew that that meant things were gonna change. And now she knew who he was. She was waiting for a change to happen. And her encounter with Jesus took that little bit of faith that she had and it exploded. She was ready for Jesus to give her that living water so that she may never thirst again. This encounter with the Messiah was something that she simply could not keep to herself. 
Her response was much like many other new believers. She was overcome by the magnitude of true, authentic faith. She was released of those burdens that were hanging on her shoulders. She was filled up by the Holy Spirit and ready to share that good news with everybody she met. When she got to the city, the first thing she told the people that Jesus, what Jesus had said about her, and that she was no longer ashamed of her past. Her enthusiasm about this encounter with Jesus could not be denied. Her faith was contagious. She brought the leaders of the city to meet Jesus. She told one person who told one person. And when we do that, community, her community, was changed. When we do that, when we share that, our community and the world is changed. As I reflect back on the young people whom I've had the privilege to lead over the years, I'm reminded of the excitement and the enthusiasm that they feel when they take on faith for themselves. It's no longer their parents' faith journey, it is now their faith journey. Their eyes light up, there's a joy that is unexplainable. When they know that they are loved unconditionally, by God, by their church family, no matter what. It's in those experiences that remind me of the importance of living out our faith in all that we do. Our young people are watching. They're paying attention to how we live out our faith. Our community is watching. Those exploring what it means to be a Christian are watching. Everybody we encounter day in and day out is watching. When we live out our faith and share our faith with the exuberance of this Samaritan woman, others will want to know more. This week, I invite us to take some time to reflect on how God is calling on each of us to encounter God and to share that encounter and that gift of Jesus with others. The woman at the well was changed by her encounter with Jesus. The woman at the well became a follower of Jesus because of this encounter. How are people changed by an encounter with you? Do they see and sense the love and light of God in your life? And you, like Jesus, are you like Jesus, seeing people for who they are and loving them as beloved children of God? Each and every day, we have the opportunity to be a light in the lives of those whom we encounter. Are you ready to be a representative of Jesus to all whom you encounter? Amen. Each week, we're also adding a little journaling. In just a minute, the prompts will be up there, but I'm going to talk through them. If you did not get a journal this morning or left it at home from last week, if you raise your hand, we'll make sure you get a journal. And if you're at home and you want me to mail you a journal, I'll do that too. So I think there's a couple hands up. So in your journal, this is just some prompts to help you think about it. You can journal on this or if something else is in your mind, I invite you to do that as well. Because a lot of times when you go on a journey, you journal about your trip. You write about things you're experiencing. So our prompts for today have to do with our encounter. So there's three questions this week, and they'll be on the screen in just a minute. Recall a time when you were in unfamiliar surroundings. Were you excited to meet someone new, or did you have an uncomfortable or fearful feeling about that? The second question, have you had an encounter with other religious practices? Do you know people who practice the other faith traditions and what does your answer mean for your view of the world? And the last question, these are really you know, simple questions. Whether we like to admit it or not, people not like us or places far from home can bring up feelings of fear. How do you think this affects our world? 
Can you imagine being part of changing this and how? I think that's my favorite question. I invite you to take some time during this prayer time to journal about that or if you get home, they'll be posted on the Facebook page and they'll also be sent in the email so there's time throughout the week. And I also invite you to, during fellowship time or when you see others out and about, to talk about what your answers are to some of these questions if you feel comfortable. So I invite you to be in a time of prayer and reflection. I invite you to pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning comes from the hymnal. It's number 451, Be Thou My Vision.
We thank you for worshiping with us. We thank you for the many ways that you support the mission and the ministry of this church through your prayers, your presence, your gift, your service, and your witness. It's because of you that we can do the ministries that we do here in this community and throughout the world. So we thank you for your support. I forgot to do the backpack blessing, but I feel like this is just as good a time as any. Now, I know we don't have all our backpacks here because some people are doing their last hurrah this weekend before school starts. But I will give a virtual blessing and make sure these tags get delivered. But each student has, will get a bag that's got some fun stuff in it in addition to their backpack tag. And it's a reminder that this church goes with them and the blessings of all of you go with them as they go back into the schools this year. So we just ask for that. So I would ask that you pray with me and we bless our students and our teachers here in this building and beyond. So please be in prayer with me. Lord, we are grateful for all of the teachers who are there getting ready for our students. We ask for a blessing over our teachers, a blessing over our students. May this year be a year of growth, of connection, of learning. And Lord, we also know that fun is an important part of school too, so may it be a year of fun. We ask for protection over our students and over our teachers and over the teachers who will who will lead our students that may not know this church. May they also feel that protection that we bless them. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now we do go out from this place as beacons of God's light out into the world to be that light that others encounter. May people be changed by their experience with us. Amen. Thank you.